Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's session. We're excited to have you with us again today as we hear from leaders from MENA and Africa. We've also got some really interesting panels lined up. Before we crack on, though, I'd like to start off by recognizing our sponsors for the Global SME Finance Forum 2021. GBTA at the gold level and Visita and Rutant at the bronze level. A huge thank you to you all. Now you can check out the organizations with which we are so happy to be partnered by heading to their virtual booths where you can find out about their products and services or even discuss and share your own. Don't forget to also visit the SME Finance Forum and the IFC Financial Institution Group booths as well. To make the most of your participation in the event, we do encourage you to take advantage of the specially built platform where you can also use the networking tab to reach out to each other, converse, mingle, and even set up video meetings. Now, yesterday we heard from Matt Todd Yop, Managing Director and Executive Vice President of IFC, and a series of great keynotes from Barbara Buchner, Global Managing Director and Executive Director of Climate Policy Initiative. Barbara, in her keynote, provided an overview of where the world stands on overall global climate finance and why there aren't more green finance activities. We also had two excellent panel discussions on SMEs in a low carbon world and locating green value in SME lending, where great insights were shared on what financial intermediaries can do to support SMEs. Asia came into focus as Alfonso Garcia Mora, IFC Regional Vice President for Asia, hosted the event. Alfonso zoomed in on the importance of SMEs in Asia and why the discussion on greening SME finance is more crucial now than ever. We featured dialogues with top leaders of three SME finance forum member institutions. Eugene Acevedo, CEO of RCBC from the Philippines, Siva Subramanian Raman, Chairman and Managing Director of Small Industry Development Bank of India, and Jamal Udin, CEO of IDLC Finance Limited from Bangladesh, hosted by Hector Gomez Ang, IFC Regional Director for South Asia. Now they shared inspiring examples of the work that their institutions are doing to provide SMEs with access to green finance. There was also a lively panel discussion on technology solutions for green finance. If you missed any of the conversations that you're really keen on catching, don't worry, all of those sessions will be available online after the conference. Well, though that is enough for me, I'll hand you over to our keynote speaker for today, Claire Schein, Director and CEO of the Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership. Good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Claire Shine. I'm the CEO and Director of the University of Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership, we were, or CISL. We were founded in 1989, and we now have over 200 corporate partners and more than 20,000 alumni around the world driving change for sustainable development with offices in South Africa and Brussels. This conference really matters for the economy, but also for communities worldwide. We believe that small businesses have a really pivotal role to play in tackling global challenges if the financial sector can enable and unlock that progress. Now, sustainable development is the agenda for this decade. And yet the label too often means too little for most people, for ordinary people. So at CISL, we've tried to simplify this, to focus rigorously on people, nature, and climate, and to help them operate in balance for the future that we all want. Well-known terms, net zero, the circular economy, are now household names, household terms, but too often they use as if they are the destination, the ultimate goal but they're only steps along the path to truly regenerating the economy and our societies. And this conference can and must act now with that lens for the long view. To design fair and healthy societies that do operate within planetary boundaries, 
we need to join the dots. COVID has reminded us how very unresilient and how very exposed we are um, at economic and societal level. And of course, how far we lack international solidarity on these challenges. We need to tackle the converging crises on nature and climate, on social inequality and more in a genuinely interconnected way. This calls for transformative leadership and for truly purpose-driven organizations. As you know, the economy drives sustainability or unsustainability through the goods and the bads uh, that it produces. But within the economy, small businesses are where so many decisions and choices are made and where jobs and services are created and delivered. SMEs are rooted in their communities. They're very well placed to understand and act upon the interdependencies of climate, nature, and social equity at both local and regional level. Every time that an SME makes a hiring decision, it advances or sets back inclusion. At national level, bold emissions targets will only be achieved if SMEs are able to adapt their business practices, their investments, and update jobs and skills. We all know that SMEs are agile, but they can respond to market needs quickly. And right now, demand is really soaring for sustainable products, services, and innovation. It is a topic of the greatest global scrutiny, which is fantastic and long overdue. In the sustainability sphere, we feel that most attention is paid to the big beasts, big corporations and the governments with huge spending power and influence. However, actual change, of course, happens close to the ground via a long chain of organizations. In climate terms, we lump that together as the scope three emissions of a corporation. But given that SMEs make up around 90% of businesses globally, we do ourselves and them a huge disservice if we only think about SMEs through this lens of supply chains. This applies right across the board. For example, CISL is working to protect and restore nature. And we've seen it firsthand how important it is to work globally to include the end producers, including smallholders in areas that are suffering from catastrophic nature loss. The run up to COP26 in Glasgow in November has very successfully engaged the private sector and showcased commitments and action. We obviously welcome the commitment of over five, uh, 250 uh, financial institutions to net zero by 2050, but we do urge much greater attention to the interim and short-term targets to spur immediate action and unlock more innovation. The major work that is now needed on implementation includes transition pathways, measurement tools, and new financial products. We want to see that focus widen further to include practical and accessible support for small and medium-sized enterprises globally. However, many SMEs report that they have trouble in setting climate targets and reducing emissions. SMEs simply don't have the resources and capabilities of bigger organizations. Daily pressures take precedence over longer-term global issues. And yet SMEs are already being directly impacted in a range of ways by today's linear, inequitable, and unsustainable economy, from energy prices to fast-changing expectations of their customers and staff. So future markets for SMEs can be truly rosy, but only if collectively we act to rewire the economy and make finance available to align with planetary health and fair life chances. CISL has four priorities to unlock or unleash the SME sector as a force for global change. First, SMEs need technical support to decarbonize, whether through standards, uh, capacity building, um, or access to expert advisors. But many of those people or institutions that advise SMEs in law, finance, property, and other matters also need to build their own skills and capacity to understand how to put competitive sustainability or 
SMEs into the commercial context. Second, many SMEs need better access to working capital to be able to make the strategic operation, strategic investments and operational changes uh, to make their business practices more sustainable. Third, the finance industry needs to develop in innovative financial solutions which tie climate ambition and performance with preferential financial terms. This can actually become financially compelling when it's combined with the inherent return on investment of many climate improvements like energy efficiency, real estate retrofit, and fleet upgrades. And fourthly, SMEs need a policy environment that supports international trade and integration supply chain criteria for people, nature, and climate. We see the European Union's Fit for 55 package as a very promising policy initiative that could shape the future of EU markets and life prospects for citizens and could be taken up on a wider scale. So in closing, CISL's vision is to call out tomorrow and to work at the nexus of business, finance and government for genuinely uh, inclusive and beneficial solutions. We're innovating several ways to support SMEs and their ecosystems. Uh, next year, we are opening a new canopy in incubator for SMEs and entrepreneurs in Cambridge so that they can access the support, the networks, and the really cutting edge ideas to develop fast growth, high impact enterprises. At COP26, we're going to launch our Climate Fit completely free online learning program for SMEs to help them prioritize their own, own climate investments. We're now organizing new kind of dialogues um, between banks and buyers to help them understand the specifics of the SME market and needs, define appropriate incentives, and lead innovation pilots related to climate finance. And lastly, we're working with partners in the International Weaving Business Coalition to create tools and materials for the SME climate hub. As I said at the beginning, this is the critical decade for people, nature, and climate. There are so many positive ways in which we can use this opportunity to reimagine and regenerate economies. And we firmly believe that unleashing the power of SMEs that represent over 90% of the global economy must be a priority, and that we in this conference have a genuine responsibility to make that happen. So with that, I wish you a really successful conference and I hope that I'll have the chance to interact with you in the years ahead as we take this work forward together. Thank you.